America's crime crisis unfolding in broad daylight. In Chicago, a smash and grab robbery was caught on camera. Security video, video showing two men breaking into a high end car dealership over the weekend. One man stood by the entrance with a gun while the other used a hammer to smash open some display cases. The suspects reportedly made off with at least eight luxury watches worth millions of dollars. This follows a string of smash and grab incidents in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Americans are fed up, though. New polling suggests most people do not think President Biden is doing nearly enough. Check out this poll, an ABC News poll showing that 61 percent disapprove of his handling of crime. Phil, but I thought AOC told us smash and grabs aren't actually panning out. The data doesn't back it up. That's what the left is telling us. It appears the facts suggest otherwise. Well, you know, the smash and grabs are real. We see it right there on video. And this is not just ordinary retail theft. These are burglaries. These are robberies. And oftentimes yeah. there's assaults that go along with these things. Imagine if you're a judge having a state law that ties your hands that says we just can't keep people in jail without bail. Because when people talk about eliminating cash bail or bail reform, that's what they're talking about. There is nothing wrong with the traditional system that allows judges to make a case-by-case -case determination on whether and who will be released on bail. We can't have a one-size-fits-all that just says we're going to let everybody out on the street regardless of what they're seen on video doing. It's, it's insanity. The traditional bail laws allow people to enjoy the presumption of innocence, and in most cases, people who commit minor crimes or don't have a criminal record, you know, they can get bail. Bail that ensures that they show up for court, that protects the dignity and the sanctity of the court system, and bail that ensures the safety of the public uh, to a large degree. So it's just absolutely insanity to talk about taking people like this that we see on our video right now and just letting them go back out on the streets to do whatever they will with whatever they want. It just doesn't make sense. And if the president and our leaders don't get their hands around uh, this, this crime problem, then society will just continue to unravel. Yeah, exactly. And Emily, you hear Phil mention the president. I mean, just 36 percent in that ABC poll believe he's tough enough on crime. Emily, that's down 10 points from August. People are realizing there's not enough being done. Right, because they are seeing that he has no interest in prosecuting these crimes, Kaylee. If he did, under his watch, 12 U.S. major cities would not have set historical murder records this year, the highest jump in crime since the FBI started keeping records. He certainly wouldn't have nominated to a U.S. attorney position a DA who refused to prosecute crimes like trespass and shoplifting and possession with intent to distribute when her county was among the highest in the country, record setting for opioid burdens and overdoses. We certainly wouldn't have the CEOs of all major retailers, including Home Depot and Target, sending a letter to Congress begging the federal government to do something because no one under his watch has. And despite lip service by the White House that it is, quote, of serious concern, remember the president of the Sheriff's Association has said, well, we have yet to see anything other than codifying federal restriction of their funds to local law enforcement. We haven't seen a program. We haven't seen a red cent. And whatever money that the attorney general throws at it through our tax dollars, believe me, it's too little, too late. And certainly tell that to the families of Officer Nishida, Officer French, and the list goes on of those who died protecting regular Americans from these brazen crime thieves. It's too little, too late, and the communities are seeing it. Exactly. And Harris, the polling gets worse on other issues. Just 28 percent saying Biden's handling inflation well. 38 mm. percent believe he can uh, handle Putin. 41 percent believe he's handling the economy well. These are not good numbers. Well, look, the economy is always important to the American people, but the president has one job, and that's to keep the nation safe. And if he can't get the first one right with the crime wave that's happening, I, I don't know what to say about inflation. It, it literally is not in first place right here. Uh, but if you can't get the most important part right, you're probably not going to get the next one right either. So I'm not shocked just in terms of covering and what we've seen and their reaction to our questions from the media as journalists about what they're going to do next. Philip, you hit the nail on the head, though. You said one size 
doesn't fit all. And you mentioned the one thing that seems to be left out with these conversations, the victims. So the bail needs to fit the crime that's been committed allegedly against the victims, right? So the crime, yeah. so it can't one it can't be one size fits all because these are all over the road. What if you're inside that dealership? I know people say, "Oh, fancy cars and watches, whatever." What if you're the guy who's trying to pay his bills working there? Are you going to try to stop these guys? Are you going to be the person yeah. to foil this crime? I mean, there is danger inherent when anybody will do this thing that is so brazen. You got to be careful. We're, we're all vulnerable to this, no matter where we're shopping, where we are. Yeah, and, and meanwhile, the president of the United States is on comedy shows, Rachel. I want to get your reaction to this. Here's his reaction to his poll numbers. How much do you pay attention to approval ratings? Well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I was paying attention in the, in the mid-60s. Now in the mid-20s, I don't pay attention. Yeah, it's not What a joke, Rachel. It is a joke. It's not funny. He went on to say um, later in that interview that, you know, his job was to make Americans' lives better. What? Whose lives have been better? Um, with inflation, you have elderly people who are on fixed incomes, who are in trouble um, w with, with the economy. You have people on the southern border whose lives and their communities have been disrupted. It's all over the map. And I'll just piggyback on um, what Harris was saying regarding, she's right, if you can't get safety right, you can't get anything right. And Biden is responsible for that, but so is George Soros and Eric Holder. I've seen Eric Holder on several news programs lately. I don't see him ever being asked about how he funded these DAs mm. um, and put them in place. And that those DAs are the reason why we're having this. And on a final note, I just want to say, as bad as this is, um, uh, and, and as responsible as some of these leaders are, um, there is a family crisis. All of these people that are, are, are stealing, um, that are on video that we see in these mob type grab and go. Um, all of these people have parents, and on some level, these, this is a moral, spiritual issue in our country, and we're failing. Mm. Yeah, Rachel, always hitting the nail on the head. This is so much bigger than just crime. It is a family, cultural issue. Uh, well said there. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.